Good morning, everyone. This is Wednesday of the, after the second Sunday of Easter. So we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we gather once again, it's important that we realize that even in the midst of this, there are many blessings we sometimes tend to overlook. For the times we doubted God, we ask God's forgiveness, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess in unending love through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up, and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison, so they came back and reported, We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord, the Lord hears, hears the, the cry, cry of, of the poor. poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The, the Lord, Lord hears, hears the, cry the cry of the, of the poor. poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The, the Lord, Lord hears, hears the cry, the cry, of, the cry of, the of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord, the Lord hears, hears the, cry the cry of the, of the poor. poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord, the Lord hears, hears the cry, the cry of, the of the poor. poor. Friends, may the Lord be with you. With your Let us be attentive to this reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God, not send his son on, uh, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the verdict, that light came into the world but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so this, his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever read the Pastoral Symphony. It's an interesting story about a girl who was born blind, her name was Gertrude, and as a result of being born blind, she had her family surrounded her, and she always had this idealistic picture of the world, an idealistic picture of people. She thought everything was good and everything was fine, and so according to the, as the story goes on, the technology develops where her sight can be restored, and once her sight is restored, two things strike her in very different ways. The first thing she sees nature. She can't believe how absolutely beautiful nature is. 
She couldn't imagine what color was like. She couldn't imagine what leaves were like. She couldn't imagine what insects were like or animals were like. Just couldn't believe it. It was just the most amazing thing for her to see. But when it came to people, this is where she got discouraged. She saw sadness on people's faces. She saw depression on people's faces. She saw discouragement on people's faces. And as the story went on, she even says to herself, I wish I hadn't had my sight restored because her ideal vision of people and the earth, one had changed for the better, the other had changed for the worse. I think for all of us, that can happen with God. We tend to blame God for our problems. We've heard from the thing, oh, it was God's will when something goes wrong because we don't have any reason or explanation for it. And yet there's so many wonderful things that come from God. There's forgiveness. There's love. There's people gathering together as a people of faith. We aren't really able to do that just quite yet, but there are people that do that. And had we not done that, we wouldn't be missing the things we are missing today. So I just kind of ask you to think about those important things, those blessings God has given us. And the greatest blessing we all know is life in the kingdom of heaven. God bless. Let us now offer these petitions. Let us pray for unborn children. We may continue to protect them, we pray. Let's pray for people going through a difficult time at home or for those people that have lost their jobs, we pray. Let's pray for leaders of government that they may do the best thing in all of our interests, we pray. For the sick and for those who care for them, we pray. For those who've been on the front lines, we pray. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayer and to bless our lives through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to give you, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to give you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let's pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, for the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life was restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts your praise. And so we join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar the way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Remember your servants, Ralph and Marie Nardell and Mariano Boyle, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. For all those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power, the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. So offer to one another a sign of God's love. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have endured with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to a newness of life through Christ our Lord. This one announcement has come to my attention that people are not aware, but our bulletin is published on the parish website. The Lord be with you. May God's blessing continue to guide our journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a good day, everyone.